more stable arrangements over the longer term. As the national framework is withdrawn, I also intend to remove the framework for further and higher education. These changes reflect changes in other sectors uh, and in wider life. The updated guidance will be published later this week to be in place from next Monday. Of course, as we all know, COVID-19 has not gone away. It remains vitally important that we continue to take up the vaccine offer and reduce the spread of the virus where we can by following the self-isolation guidance for education settings to continue to undertake robust risk assessments. Throughout the pandemic, I've been struck by the resilience of our young people. Dealing with the ups and downs of the pandemic has increased the pressure young people feel about exams, about qualifications, and there's no doubt about that. I want to reassure you that this year's exams have been designed to be as fair as possible and to take into account the disruption that you faced due to the pandemic. There is lots of support available to help you prepare and there will be support to guide you after you've sat your assessments, especially if you're not sure what to do next. For those learners whose uh, motivation has been uh, impacted by the pandemic and maybe feel overwhelmed or disengaged with education, remember that you are not alone. Your school, your local further education college or Careers Wales, as well as the support you get from families and friends, they're there to help you get to the next stage of your life, whatever it is that you choose to do. I'd like to outline some further measures that we are taking today to support learners. Firstly, we want to enable learners to take their exams well and safely. The Minister for Health and I have agreed an exception for those who have recently tested positive, but who feel well enough to sit their exam. Learners who are due to sit an exam can start testing on day three and four of their isolation period. If both tests are negative, if they feel well enough, they may sit their exam from day four after the initial positive test. WJC have designed the exam timetable to schedule exams 10, 10 days apart so that an individual learner who tests positive for COVID-19 will only miss one component of their qualification. WJC will be publishing guidance imminently, including on special considerations. It's critical that we work together to enable young people to know their choices and to feel confident. Our Young Persons Guarantee is also in place to ensure every learner leaving education has the offer of further study, training or work, so that no one is left behind. As a government, we continue to take measures to support our most disadvantaged learners. Our Renew and Reform Plan, supported by £278 million in the last financial year alone, has weighted funding towards the most vulnerable and disadvantaged learners, including bespoke support for individuals. Exam appeals usually include a charge. This year, we will be making funding available so that disadvantaged learners will not be charged for any appeals. We've also been working with higher education institutions to help them reach out and support our most disadvantaged learners. We are making a change to legislation to enable the Welsh Government to share free school meal data with UCAS, including providing better data for universities on uh, Welsh learners who are or have previously been eligible for free school meals. This is to help widen access to university for our most disadvantaged young people, and we aim to enable this to happen for clearing and confirmation this year, and then every year in future. Schools, colleges and others who support learners through the application and exams process have been able to inform universities through a supporting statement of where a learner has, for example, been eligible for financial support from their college. 
and there remains an opportunity to inform universities about ongoing COVID disruption. And building on the existing support for learners in transition years, the Welsh Government has asked local authorities and further education colleges to come together to ensure that the young people who they know are most in need are receiving bespoke personalised support to enable them to transition to the next steps. We can be immensely proud of your efforts as learners and as staff over the last year. And as a government, we will continue to do all that we can to support you. A very big poor look. Good luck to you all. And uh, I'll take the first question from Kemlin Davis at BBC Wales. Um, there was no specific mention of face coverings in your remarks, so I wonder if you could clarify exactly what the situation will be in schools uh, regarding the use of face coverings now. Yes, certainly. Face coverings uh, have been part of the regime which we've had in place uh, for some time as part of the framework guidance which schools have been operating with uh, very successfully um, and as part of the withdrawal of the framework uh, the wearing of face coverings will not be uh, mandatory in the way that they have been but it's important that uh, each individual school is also able to uh, undertake a risk assessment as other uh, as other uh, organizations and services do right across uh, our society and the guidance which we will be providing to schools this week will enable them to make those assessments and for schools which do need to take particular measures can do that and face coverings will obviously be one of a range of measures which are available. Schools will be able to make those judgments in conjunction with their local education authorities and with uh, public health uh, officials. Uh, for those sitting, exam sitting exams uh, we're encouraging particular arrangements around uh, social distancing, uh, the wearing of face coverings in and out of the exam uh, centre uh, and other measures which are specific to exam conditions. And so as part of the suite of measures which many schools will be operating over the next few weeks, that will, uh, that will uh, play an important part. Mae'r gwisgoma gydau yn ysgolion i wedi bod yn rhan o'r framwaith uh, mae'n hysgolion i ynghymru wedi bod yn gweithredu er samser ac wedi bod yn gweithredu hynny yn llwyddiannus. Uh, ond fel rhan o'r broses o symud tuag at sefyllfa uh, ar draws yn cymdeithas neu ar draws yn economi ni sy'n adlyw ar chi'r symud o sefyllfa pandemig i sefyllfa endemig. Um, wrth, symud wrth y framwaith bydd y gofyniad uh, i wisgo mae gyda'i norfodol ddim yn rhan o hwnnw, ond mae'n bwysig bod ysgolion dal yn cymryd y cyfle i, uh, i weithredu um, o ran y cynllawiau newydd, uh, bydd cefnogaeth a uh, uh, checklist yn cael ei ddarparu i gefnogi penaethiau i allu wneud uh, y penderfyniadau hynny ar asesiadau risg hynny. Um, ac yn dibynnu ar amgylchiadau unigol ysgolion, bydd e'n bosib i gymryd camau'n cynnwys gwisgwm y gydau pam mae hynny yn addas i adlywyr chi'r risg yn lleol. Bydd trefniadau penodol yn cael ei wneud o ran, uh, ran amgylchiadau uh, ar oriadau o ran um, uh, pethau cymdeithasol, gwisgwm y gydau fe'n mewn ag allan o'r ystafell, gwyntyllu a, 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 a'r, a'r mesurau eraill byddech chi'n disgwyl i'r sefyllfa honno. Felly, bydd, bydd, bydd y mesurau hynny na, yn cael eu gweithredu uh, ynghyd estyn ar oriadau dros wrth nosau nesta. Diolch. Um, you've also you've said in the past that you'd be keen to uh, scrap rules affecting children as soon as possible. So I wonder then if you could explain why it's taken so long for you to reach this point where actually schools have ended up playing catch up, catching up with the rest of society. Well, uh, we have been very clear um, with uh, our partners in the education system. We work very collaboratively with, uh, with, uh, with education authorities, with uh, teaching unions and so on to ensure that the measures we have in place in schools uh, are appropriate at all times. Um, we've just had an end of uh, term break. We've been very clear throughout this process that the changes that we make in schools are made whenever possible during school time so that schools can respond to them during uh, the school uh, term themselves. Uh, we are in the second week uh, back uh, this week after uh, the break and that's why the announcements are being made in the usual way at the beginning of the term uh, in this way. As I say, 
the changes reflect the journey that we are on across society, uh, shifting from the pandemic to the endemic stage. Uh, and it's, at that, it's in that context that it's appropriate to move from the framework uh, into broader guidance for schools uh, and settings. Ni wedi gweithio ar y cyd gyda awdurdod y lleol a gyda undebau drwy'r cyfnod i sicrhau bod y canllawiau a'r gofynion sy'n ganddo ni yn addas i'r sefyllfa o bryd i'w gilydd yn yn ysgolion ni. Mae hefyd wedi bod yn rhan o'r ffordd ni wedi gweithredu i sicrhau bod ni ddim yn datgan newidiadau mawr yn ystod rhwng y tymor o'r ysgol, ond yn wneud hynny ar gychwyn neu yn ystod y tymor, felly ni'n bythefnos nôl i'r tymor yr wythnos hon, felly mae'n amser addas i ddatgan y newidiadau rhein. Diolch, Cymlyn. Owain Phillips, ITV Wales. Brawn dda i chi. Can I ask you on pupil attendance figures, some very low attendance figures at the moment, well below the 95% target that you have. Do you accept that there are some pupils out there who've lost the habit of simply going to school? Well, actually, I'm making a statement in the Senedd uh, this afternoon, Owen, in relation to attendance uh, generally. Um, uh, as you will know, uh, I commissioned a review at the end of last year, which we've been, uh, which has been very uh, helpful in guiding our response in relation to uh, attendance. Um, and we are very concerned that particular year groups and particular cohorts of learners have been more likely, in some cases very much more likely, than others not to be in school. Um, so I'll be outlining in the chamber this afternoon a set of uh, measures in response to that. Um, and, uh, you know, it is very clear uh, that learners should be in school um, and that uh, parents and carers should be encouraging learners back into the classroom where they can learn with their peers uh, safely, face to face. Um, that is the best uh, place for them to be. I do recognise, of course, that the challenges and circumstances of the last two years have you know, been, in, been very, very challenging for many learners. But as we move from that pandemic to the endemic stage, I want to encourage learners back into the classroom and I'll have some specific um, measures to announce in the Senedd later on today. Uh, some parents have been fined in the past um, for regular non-attendance of their children in school. When will that provision return? Well, um, as you uh, know, we have not at any point changed the law in relation to the regime around, uh, around fixed penalty uh, fines. Um, what we have uh, encouraged during the period of the last two years, uh, we've, we've, we've discouraged uh, the issuing of fines given the circumstances that we've all been experiencing and the particularly challenging circumstances that many learners have faced. Uh, but one of the things I will be saying in the Senedd uh, this afternoon is that we are now asking uh, local education authorities to revert to the pre-COVID guidance in relation to the issuing uh, of fines. Now that is still, it is still the case that they should only be used as a last resort when all attempts to engage with families in the range of ways that we have, uh, have been exhausted. And you will also be aware uh, that I've recently committed additional funding to recruit family engagement officers in Wales to increase our ability uh, to have you know, bespoke uh, relations, relationships with families and to engage in particular ways where learners have been uh, persistently absent. Um, but I'll have more to say about that later on uh, in the chamber today. Uh, Abby Whittick, Wales Online. Thank you, Minister. Um, you've, you've said that fines will only be used now as a, as a very last resort. And I just wondered what measures will be tried before those fines will be imposed, how much those fines will be, and also what kind of support you're going to give to schools to bring those children back. You know, we've heard a lot about huge rise in mental health, behavioural problems. What support will be given to schools and what, what is a last resort? You know, what, what will be tried before they're fined? Well, um, as I mentioned in my answer to Owain Abbey just a moment ago, um, we have always asked for uh, fines to be uh, a question of last resort. There's a you know very well established um, set of practices which predate COVID, uh, where you know very understandably uh, people want to use light fines only when everything else has um, you know proven unsuccessful. Um, so, in accordance with that pre-COVID guidance, we would expect all the usual ways of engaging with families to be 
continued. As I say, we've supplemented the support available to schools to recruit family engagement officers in order to strengthen their ability to do that. We all know uh, how challenging the last two years has been. Uh, and so we will always want to make sure that we are working with families, with learners, to, uh, to encourage their return to school. But in, you know, in this very small number of cases where that isn't possible and where there isn't um, you know, an underlying reason for that, um, we feel now is the right point to make that, uh, to, to revert, if you like, to the pre-COVID practice. Sure, but I mean, as we all know, it's more than one in 10 children that are still not in school. So what, what is your message to parents and carers who aren't sending their children in? What would you say to them? I want parents and carers to send their children uh, to school. Uh, everything we have, everything we know, and it's certainly been highlighted over the last uh, two years, is that uh, children learn best when they are together with their peers, learning with their teachers face to face in that uh, in that classroom setting. We are very clear about you know the many adverse effects uh, that uh, children and young people have felt by not being able to be in that. Uh, environment uh, enough, if you like, because of the uh, necessary actions that governments everywhere have had to take in relation to uh, COVID. Um, so we want to encourage parents and carers and learners to be back in the classroom, learning with their peers, face to face with their uh, with their teachers and lecturers. Dear uh, Tom Magna, Carers World. Uh, good afternoon, Minister, and uh, thank you for taking my questions. Uh, I'd like to, if I may, uh, draw on your expertise as a former Council General for Wales. I appreciate that's a bit of a quantum shift from today. Uh, on the 1st of July 2020 in the Senate, you said, and I quote, the Welsh Government continues to ensure the protection of these rights, that is human rights, throughout the management of the COVID-19 crisis. Now, the Older People's Commissioner for Wales and others have since raised concerns that this was not the case. Do you still believe that the Welsh Government respected human rights, particularly of the elderly, through the um, actions taken so far? Uh, yes, Tom, I do. Uh, the judgments which the government has taken at all points have uh, had at their core uh, an assessment of the impact on the rights of individuals. And uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout the pandemic, uh, there has been uh, uh, the requirement to analyse any potential step which the government uh, is taking from the perspective of the rights of those affected has been central to uh, central to our judgments throughout. We are a government which is committed uh, to human rights, and we've done our best at all times to reflect that in the you know, very difficult decisions which uh, have had to be taken over the course of the last two years. Thank you for that. Um, you'll be aware of the high court judgment involving hospital and care home working in the pandemic in England, uh, a judgment that decided at least one official policy was unlawful. If it later transpires that the Welsh government had acted unlawfully in any way, there's no suggestion that it did. In that hypothetical situation, how would that alter your view on respect for human rights? Thank you. Well, uh, Tom, I'm not sure, you know, I think the point you're making is uh, a spe specific point in relation to particular uh, court action, as you say, in relation to England. Uh, the point I made in response to your earlier question, you know, very much remains our priority as a government. Uh, we have consistently uh, weighed very carefully in the balance throughout the impact on individuals' rights of uh, the various steps we've been called on to take as a government by the circumstances in which we've all found ourselves. Uh, and I'm absolutely clear that that has been a priority for the government uh, throughout at all stages. Thank you. Uh, Harry Hansen, that's TV. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, Minister. I wanted to ask you about a study, a recent study, which some of my viewers have brought to my attention. Um, it's a study by Swansea University that found that only 53% of secondary schools in Wales are offering proper education around menstruation. Now, it was made compulsory to be included as part of um, the syllabus in 2020. So is this statistic quite shocking to you as Education Minister? Well, actually, one of the key... Uh, um, one of the... Uh, key advantages of bringing forward our new curriculum from September of this year is that it enables us to ensure that all our young learners uh, have 
the education that they need about uh, about uh, menstruation, about uh, sexual um, uh, identity, about uh, health questions, well-being questions, a range of those key uh, key uh, learnings, key education that we need in order to live healthy lives. Uh, and lives where well-being and our the well-being of others is at the heart of our considerations. And so I'm looking forward to seeing the curriculum begin to be rolled out in our school from September of this year. Um, and we'll be able to make sure that uh, in doing that, our children and young people get the education that they um, that they need. Thank you for that. And, and, you know, I suppose building on it. Um, the study outlines a number of things, you know, concerns that lots of students are missing classes, missing exams because of that, as well as um, a lack of training um, in teachers around it. So, you know, is the Welsh Government going to consider kind of looking into that and, and maybe offering more training to teachers on this particular issue? Absolutely. That's exactly um, what we are working on already, Harry, uh, um, in order to enable us to uh, provide the kind of education that you're referring to. We need to be able to make sure that teachers uh, are, are trained and have the access to professional learning uh, around menstruation, around other uh, aspects of our health and well-being. Um, and um, accompanying our new curriculum, there is a very substantial um, uh, programme of investment in professional learning for our teaching workforce generally and for teaching assistants as well. Um, and so from September, there'll be a core entitlement of professional learning and a range of other uh, resources available to teachers and teaching assistants. Um, and uh, so you know, we will be able to make sure that the curriculum is taught uh, in, in that way from September onwards. Thank you. Thank you very much.